This episode was beyond stupid, but like in a, a goofy, happy way. I don't know. I just feel like this was a palate cleanser after the previous episodes where thing, things got pretty dark. But this episode was also basically a cameo fest, so I want to talk about what if episode number seven. So what if Thor was an only child, so he didn't have Loki as a sibling, even adopted, and he was basically a frat party boy. And I'm really happy about this episode because every episode I reviewed, I was going, oh wow, this is my favorite. So now actually it goes six, five, four, maybe this episode between three and then two and one. It's, this episode is somewhere in the middle. It's hard to rank it without seeing the rest of the episodes, I think. Definitely better than episode one, though. Every episode's been better than episode one. The amount of actors they got to do cameos or just to do a line or two was absolutely amazing. And I say that because if you go to previous episodes, some interesting people are missing from uh, voicing the animated version of their live action characters. It's a, a little bit weird, but in this one, man, they got everyone. You can't tell me that Jeff Goldblum saying, we're keeping the scoot scoots isn't just the highlight of your week. Though I guess I have to say, given all the big names they did have, it was weird they didn't have Brie Larson voice Captain Marvel. That one was a bit odd because I feel like she would want to do that, but I guess I don't know the circumstances of what was going on with her and her schedule. Yeah, there were a ton of callbacks and Easter eggs in this episode to all the other MCU movies, you know, like such as Raccoon being called a rabbit by Thor because he doesn't know that Rocket is a, a, a raccoon. I'm sure somebody could make a top 100 Easter eggs callbacks from this episode very easily. I'm also sure that someone on YouTube has already done that and you could probably just search for it. It was a lot of fun seeing the different characters from the various MCU movies and teams partying with each other. Though I do call BS, I'm sorry, on Earth being totally chill with just partying, humans just being like, yeah, let's do it. If anything from the past year and a half has taught us anything, we're kind of just little bitches. So I have a feeling that, yeah, there would be some people that would party with Thor and all them and be like, yeah, let's go. But there'd also be a lot of humans that would try to kill them or attack them or freak out. And then there'd also be the people that like denied they were even there, even though it was, you know, s s super obvious. Also, you can't tell me that the different governments, different world governments wouldn't be trying to crack down on this and freaking out. But let's just pretend like the beams coming down from the ships just kind of made humanity chill out. Also, it's fiction, so let's just pretend like the mass looting, the riots, the, the murdering and, and such chaos didn't happen because we're in a happy fictional world. I gotta say, Giant Blue Loki is definitely my aesthetic. I loved him. I loved him saying my brother from another mother to Thor. And the fact that they were actually bros and got along. I mean, not bros in the related sense, but you know, just like really friendly with each other. That, that was heartwarming. I also loved his ice horns and the fact that he called his men the ice men. Just, it, it was lovely. I, I adore this version of Loki. Oh boy, Thor, when he said the Midgardians have a word for women like you, party pooper, I thought for sure he was gonna go way worse. I mean, I know this is Disney, so they weren't gonna say like cunt, but you know, part of me kind of hoped they'd drop the C word and just everyone would turn and gasp. Even though I think that word is funny, but um, I have met women where I've said that word and they've just, lost their shit. Not that I was calling them the C word. I, I was just using it in a sentence. I'm not sure how people are taking the Captain Marvel versus Thor fight, especially since they they were kind of even for most of it, even though Thor certainly got his shots in and so did Captain Marvel. And they made it pretty evident that she couldn't use her full power because she was afraid of damaging the earth and hurting other people around. I know there's a lot of hate 
uh, boner videos for Brie Larson and her as Captain Marvel. So I kind of wonder if those same people made like a million videos about how it was BS that they were going toe to toe and that Captain Marvel could possibly take Thor out. I can, can sort of see their point of view. I know that Captain Marvel is made way too OP in the MCU and I really hope they depower her in the Marvels movie. But it is kind of weird when you think about, okay, you've had decades of fighting and training. Thor said like a thousand years, and he was trained by Odin and some really good fighters. And I get he's a party boy, but still, you know, a, a god that's had a thousand years of combat training. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's just because Captain Marvel is so overpowered, but a little sketchy. Although I do imagine what it would be like to be Captain Marvel and you being called to Earth and then you find out that you just need to stop a frat boy who's partying too hard. Like, oh geez, I'm constantly dealing with genocide and planetary destruction and, and, and now I'm just coming to break up a, a basically a college party. Fuck my life. With Thor basically being a teenager that was terrified of his mother figuring out that he wasn't doing what he was supposed to be doing and he was partying was hilarious and absolutely in line with the Thor we saw in the first Thor movie. And honestly, Frigga is pretty terrifying, so I, I, I don't blame him and everyone else being like, oh, plus Thor's a mama's boy, come on. We could all tell. So we almost, almost got a happy ending, but because this is the What If series and we can't have any nice things, we got Ultron coming at the very end in Vision's body, and he had all the Infinity Stones, which is a very bad thing. And given that even the Watcher did not anticipate Ultron showing up, makes me think he's from a different alternate Earth and that he's using the Infinity Stones to travel to different Earths to conquer, which I'm hoping means that we're going to see the Marvel zombies from a previous episode start to bleed into the other Earths and maybe Vision uses them or Ultron uses them to decimate the planets. Although maybe not that great of an idea because the heroes still have their powers when they're zombies. I don't know, I just want to see more Marvel zombies, okay? So I'm kind of hoping this makes a interconnecting story and the last two episodes we're going to see more of this where the Watcher's like, oh no, uh, I need to get people uh, together to deal with this threat. So this was a in the middle episode. I enjoyed it. It was silly. It was stupid, but it, it was fun to watch. So I liked it, but you can let me know, like, subscribe, share your thoughts about this episode down below.